hoped that when I started teaching this, other professors elsewhere would say, oh, you know, they're teaching it in Northern Illinois, why can't I teach it here? Um, uh, I think the first time I thought it, taught it was 1981. It could have been before that. Um, and um, it was taught as uh, one of those workshop special topic courses, you know, you put posters around campus and saying, you know, I'm offering a course in this, you know, sign up for it. So it wasn't a rather a cataloged course actually until about four or five years ago. So I put signs up around campus and my department chair got a call from the assistant uh, provost wondering, is this the right uh, uh, appropriate topic to be taught in a university? Okay. And I mean, that's a, I can understand him thinking that, particularly, you know, in their early 1980s, um, but uh, the, uh, I responded to it by uh, photocopying a 40-page annotated bibliography from Greenspoon and Bacalar's book, Psychedelic Drugs Reconsidered. It's a glorious bibliography. Just, I can't imagine the hours it took to do that kind of stuff. So I sent that to him with a note, and I've tried, not to, I've tried to tone down my self-righteousness since then, but at that time, I wrote him on a note and I said, um, you know, here's information on it, and I referred, I think, maybe to some other books. Um, it's my understanding that the content of a course is determined by the department, not the provost's office, and um, that um, if you have any problem with this, I would like to discuss it with you at an open meeting of the college council. Well, the college council is largely, deter is largely populated by department chairmen or people who are important in the department who would stand by their right to determine what goes on in their courses and not have the provost's office tell them what to do that. Well, two days later, my department chair got a telephone call say, from the assistant provost saying um, um, that he, under, uh, he understood, um, but somebody had asked him, and uh, he was just following through on this question. Um, and so that's the last I heard of it. And a friend of mine said, uh, they know they've got a bulldog over there. And I didn't realize at first what he meant, but Thomas Huxley was considered Darwin's bulldog, and he was the guy who sort of defended Darwin. And so he said, Tom, my friend, said, uh, you know, you're the bulldog over there. And so I taught it at a, as a workshop, um, special topic seminar workshop. Um, at first it was called Psychedelic Research, and then I found some students were afraid to take it because they thought that research would require mathematical ability, <laughs> and they didn't have it or want it, so then I changed it to psychedelic mind view. Actually, I like that topic better because the question is, what's the nature of the human mind? Um, and then um, well, f four or five, six years ago, my department chair said, you need to put this in the catalog because I've been teaching it on a one-off basis basically every semester. You're only supposed to do that for a certain number, like five semesters, and I'd been doing it for 10 years or more. Um, so we sent it through, and it it didn't get accepted at first at the college level, but then second time through it did, and it went through. The trustees signed off on it, so now it's called um, Foundations of Psychedelic Studies. And it's in the uh, uh, Department of uh, uh, Leadership, Educational Psychology, and Foundations. And that's so. Uh, so I'm probably the weirdest educational psychologist. <laughs> and I'm hoping other people will pick up on it. There was a course that, um, University of British Columbia, Vancouver, a couple of years ago on psychedelics, and there are people who add little psychedelic units in their other courses. I mean, like in medical school on, um, you know, psychoactive drugs, and now um, uh, NYU Bellevue Hospital has one for um, residents and interns and stuff. So, you know, that's a that is a breakthrough. That's a real breakthrough course.